going on guys? Chad and their farms. Oh, it's uh, muddy. Muddy today. It's still, it's actually sprinkling. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. This is not good. Definitely making some tracks in the mud today. Hope y'all are doing well. And by the way, we're up in the last 28 days, 907, yeah, 907 subscribers. Whoa, so welcome and howdy. This is my farm that I lease, which just means I don't, I don't live here. I live eight minutes away, but the land that I lease butts up to mom and dad. I've got about four and a half acres at my disposal and I use like one and a half. <laughs> With it being 2021, I feel the need to mention, because there is kind of a rush to get a piece of land and start farming and things like that. And I'm just telling you right now, like, don't stress about it. There's, there's options out there. You don't have to run out and finance some land and figure things out like right now. Like there's plenty of people out there that have land that they're maintaining or not and you can go out and with a little bit of work you can have at least what do i got a dozen chickens and a dozen chickens in the incubator a farm dog two steers two pigs with babies on the way three rabbits five ducks and a lone ranger turkey so, so if you're wanting to do it just do it and the nice thing about leasing your land is if you change your mind and the farm life's not for you, you can always just say, ah, after this lease is up, I'm, I'm out. I'm going back to the city life. And it's perfectly okay. You're here and you don't have farm dreams. You're just watching because you like watching other people farm. That's awesome too. Appreciate you guys. I'm learning, but it's kind of a school of hard knocks. Sorry, I got distracted. I got a, I have a coyote set over here. I was trying to make sure nothing was in it. I got too close. A coyote trap. Let's feed everybody so it gets a little quieter. And I'll introduce you guys. This is YouTube's favorite livestock guardian dog. Self-titled. Smokey. She's a good dog. She's a real good dog. She's very pretty. Yep. Very pretty and very muddy. I know. I got to feed everybody. Hang on. There's a few of the bird herd. Here's the oinkers. It's Haas and Lola. And they're together right now because we're trying to make bacon seeds. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? There, let's put it in a little drier place. Not yet, making the rounds. Hang on, I'll pet you though. Hi, sugar. And in case you're wondering, what do you mean you lease your farm? And you got a dog out there? Yes, I have a livestock guardian dog. Not a pet, there's a big difference. Now, pet by definition, I mean, let's, excuse you. Let's be real here though, she is, she is a pet as far as most people would see her because she's a dog. But yes, she stays out here. No, she's not cold. And if she does get cold, grandma and, bought, grandma and grandpa bought her a contractor grade dog house. That thing's legit, I could fit in there. And some rough cut cedar shingles with a drip edge. It's nicer than the house I live in. This. Even though he's shy, is Magneto, our lone rooster. He's an AM Samani, which means he's all black. It's actually black to the bone, black tongue, black organs, 
super cool bird. Not as rare as they used to be. There's a lot of breeders out there. But we did hatch him out. And then there's these two. What do you think, buddy? What do you think? Hmm? Hmm? What you think? And that's their feed bunk that I built them. And every day we get to come out here and we get to find the feed bunk and move it back in. And every day the feed bunk is moved, one of y'all, very kindly and politely, tells me I should just, tells me I should chain it to the fence and then they won't move it. But where's the humor in that? I mean, when I come in here, I get to walk around with them, see them, make sure they're doing all right, even if they, even if they don't trust me since we abandoned them. It's been like three months. I mean, come on, guys. We can be friends now, can't we? So let's set up their bunk. They're usually kind of rowdy, too. There we go. Cows are awesome. Yes, these are steers, I'm aware. But cows. Anybody who watches this YouTube video that doesn't have a farm, those are cows like any other cow. What makes them steers is they're males and so they're bulls, but we banded them, which is castration. Safest, cleanest, easiest way to do it in my opinion. And that makes them steers. We are growing them out for food on our farm. Let's throw some scratch. This is like ice cream for chickens. There you go, buddy. What's up, boys? We also, thanks to our friends over at Walker Farm Fam, have some silver fox rabbits. And our first one I'm gonna show you, he's not a silver fox. He's a silver fox and a New Holland, I believe. So he's a little bit smaller. His name is Nod. He is super cool better view he looks like a wild rabbit but he's got that silver fox color to him now his hair doesn't stand up on him though like a silver fox then we've got winkin one of our does who's always a little bit shy but she is much bigger beautiful doe but we have winkins we have winkin and blinkin we have winkin's sister at home blinkin who is being bred to speedy our male silver fox buck and if you want to know how we got him i'll put that card up here but she's at the house and actually all the rabbits are going to be moving to the house pretty quick um i'd do it today but it's monday i don't feel like doing it <laughs> but we will have baby bunnies if you didn't know baby bunnies kits k-i-t-s they can be born in 28 days like the gestation period is 28 days so that's pretty cool um as far as the pigs go I'd be shocked. They've been together for like 72 hours now. I'd be shocked if Haas hasn't gotten the job done to breed Lola. And the thing with pigs though is their gestation period is three months, three weeks, and three days. So almost four months. So you're looking at May if old buddy got the job done. And now comes, if you're a subscriber here and you've been here for more than the last month, you know, we've been, we've been doing this a year, January 12th. So January 12th is our one year anniversary. Hang on, I'm gonna get to you, I know. But if you've been here very long at all, this is everybody's favorite part. All right, back up. Oh, you're so muddy. Or your paws are. You're so muddy. 
Oh my goodness, it's gonna happen, isn't it? You can get me muddy, it's okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Here it comes. Nope, just wanted a butt rub. This is Smokey. She is on January 20th, so, okay, here we go. A couple of days ago, she turned seven months old. We got her as a pup, and she is amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, let's take care of them. Here comes playtime. Here comes playtime. Ugh. Ugh. You're getting huge. But Smokey, we were told, was 100% Anatolian. And I don't know anymore. So I actually got a DNA test for dogs. I'll put the link down below to the one I got. I'm thinking she is a cross between an Anatolian and a Great Pyrenees. And I say that because of her coat. It's really thick, which is okay. That won't bother me one bit if she's across a mix. Not one bit. Let me get you an egg, if there is one. If you go watch our previous video, we lost a chicken to a predator of some sort. I'm thinking that that chicken didn't make it back in the coop. <laughs> Easy, Red. I'm thinking that chicken didn't make it back into the coop at night and tried to sleep up on top of the duck's cage. Yeah, no eggs. Sorry, buddy. That Lakeshore egger laid all through the winter. She never slowed down. And we've still got here in Southwest Missouri, we've still got two months of winter, at least. Freezing temps, I mean, it's kind of an odd place to live because it's like 48 degrees today, but it could snow tomorrow. I think it actually is supposed to snow later this week. This is red, our lone red bourbon. He is gorgeous. Aren't you, buddy? Now, one of the questions we get asked the most, well, we get asked several questions and it's interesting because some of y'all, not all of you, if there's, if there's 5,300 subscribers, maybe 10 of you do this, but, and it's the same few too. So I want to address it in a video instead of in the comments, but somebody will leave a comment and they'll say, man, those ducks really need a pond but then you don't come back and read my response. So you say it in every video. That's okay, you commented on every video. Every video, so my comments said, man, those ducks really need a pond, they really need a pond. Well, I'm leasing my farm. That's not even my trash. <laughs> I'm not gonna put a pond out here. Well, why don't you get them a pool? Well, there's a big misconception about ducks and these are Welsh Harlequins and then two, I call them Atwoods ducks because they came from Atwoods. They don't need a pond. Ducks don't need a pond, okay? They just need a place to clean their bills and their nostrils and clean fresh water every day, sometimes multiple times. And putting a pool out here while the weather freezes at night, and I don't have power, so I can't run a heater, 
but putting a pool out here and filling it up with 20 gallons of water and then coming out and dumping a 20 pound block of ice on the ground because it's no good they're going to get it muddy and dirty then i'm just however much per gallon water costs because i don't live on a well i just dump that on the ground just doesn't make any sense financially i get it some of y'all don't know what kind of ducks we have and you don't know if they need water or not and you're just looking out you just want to see honestly it's probably not even anything towards me or the farm or how I do it you just want to watch ducks swim in water and I get it that's awesome I love it but until we have a farm with a pond ow, until we have a farm with a pond it's just not it's not uh, possible and uh, they're happy they're Welsh harlequin ducks they're like twice the size of a duck that you see at your local pond in the park um, they can't fly they're so big they're a meat duck but the good news is for them I have zero desire to pluck a duck because I mean I might breast one out if I just wanted to taste duck meat but I have zero desire to pluck a duck uh, they're pin feathers I've heard and I know from some wild duck I've had they're a nightmare so they get to live rent free but they look really pretty so it's all good look, look at look I didn't pee my pants. This is you. This is you. You are this, this is you. Part toddler, that's what she is. Amazing dog. For, you, for those of you that don't know, with my parents being uh, a couple hundred yards away, there is plenty of grandpa and grandma Smokey time. So Smokey's not out here by herself. now. I'm getting ready to walk out of the gate and I'm gonna show you something. But this is what a livestock guardian dog does. She's not a pet. See that? Bothered her because I left the gate open, not because I'm leaving. This is her home. Come here. Good girl. This is her home, this is her flock. This is where she lives. We visit twice a day, sometimes three times. And I've been out here for like three hours this morning. It's already 11.30, so. Yep, my buddy. We got a bark box, description, bark box subscription toys in there with her. Grandma makes sure that she gets treats on the regular and that her teeth are healthy. And because, hey, I'll see you later. I'll be back after a while. Because she does have a little bit of a limp. And yesterday, my dad, when I say roughhouse with her, I mean, he played with her. But he roughhoused with her for 30 or 45 minutes. No sign of the limp. The limp only happens when she's been sleeping, which is attributed to a growing pain. So... What we've done, mistakenly, and I appreciate you guys telling us this, I used to give Smokey a little bit of chicken feed, like layer feed. And it's just because it was funny and, well, it was funny. She ate chicken feed. <laughs> I used to tease her about laying ducks, laying ducks, laying eggs. But I quit doing that because that layer feed is full of protein and calcium. And it was certainly throwing off the kind of pricely, kind of pricey, puppy food for large breed dogs that we were giving her, which is a great food, but we were basically just counteracting that good food by giving her that chicken feed. So we've quit doing that. And I can honestly say after three or four days of not giving her any of that egg maximizer, I've seen an improvement. So I'm glad we did that. Thank you all for pointing that out. The rifle, by the way, is for critters. I don't carry it around to look cool. It's a Marlin 60. 22 and it's one of my favorite there's, there's more of these 22 rifles in the world are sold in america certainly in the states than there ever has been now since remington bought marlin i've heard there's some quality control issues and guys actually refer to guys and gals 
actually refer to these Marlins now as Rimlins, Remington Marlin, Rimlin. And that kind of stinks. I've got three of them. And I think my dad's got one from like the 50s or 60s, like a gold edition. It's just awesome. Just a good little rifle. But when you guys see that in videos, it's it's not to look cool. It's because if you have a farm, <laughs> you never know when you might have to protect your animals or yourself. So we do have a coyote out here. I have zero desire to tangle with him. And uh, we got some raccoons. And I'll be honest, I don't really want to tangle with a raccoon either. <laughs> I think that'd be like... Uh, fighting Chuck Norris blindfolded. <laughs> I'm sure the, without the blindfold, I'd fare any better, but you know what I mean? At least I'd see what's coming. And even though it's muddy, I'm gonna do something for you guys. Oh man. Rock in this mud. It was like fill dirt, so. Anyway, even though it's muddy, I wanna show you guys the home of the future garden. It's amazing, I'm so excited. Look at that. Now, I know what you're thinking. It doesn't look like much right now, but this house, mom and dad's house is like 90 feet wide. So we can put a garden back here that's like a hundred by a hundred if we want to. And we're not going to, because we have no idea if we'll eat that much. We are affiliates of Haas Tools, which means those are the seeds, those are the veggies, the fruit. Anything and everything you see us grow is gonna be from Haas Tools. And we're super excited about it. I love Haas Tools. Link down and below. If you haven't bought your seeds, get them. I'm in zone 6B and I've had my seeds for two weeks and it's January 25th. Now, the nice thing about Haas Tools is when other companies run out of seeds, Haas will still have them. They get seeds in daily. Uh, I know that USPS, to handle their outgoing orders and UPS, they stop by several times a day, okay? So if you order them, they've literally got the fastest shipping I've ever seen. But with UPS and USPS stopping by so often because they're picking up orders that you guys place, they're also bringing in orders to replenish, to replenish Haas Tools' stash, their seed stash, seed supply. Stash sounds kind of... Yeah, Greg and Travis, awesome guys. They run the show, father-son pair, just just awesome. Awesome family, awesome company. I think a lot of them, and uh, we sincerely appreciate them having us and you know teaching us. But this is the first year for the garden right here at this spot. Last year I had a little raised bed in my backyard at my house, and I plan to do that again. But Dad and I are going to build a bunch of raised beds right here. Um, we're not going to bring in dirt and do all that. I live in Southwest Missouri and one thing we grow better than anyone is rocks. We have rocks everywhere. And I mean like giant rocks, just right where I'm sitting right here. Check us out. I wear a 2X glove. Rock. Look at that. And they're everywhere. They're everywhere. So the pasture land that you see in Missouri it ain't in Southwest Missouri. We're gonna do raised beds. We can control weed pressure a little easier and get an idea for how much we really wanna grow. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna start seeds inside and our Haas, I have a Haas Tools um, seed starting kit. I've got the 162 tray, that's the best one. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Right, go big or go home, right? And they're made in America, which is awesome. Um, they're extremely robust. They're not flimsy plastic like you find in your, you know, your local big box store. I've stood on them at 270 pounds and jumped. No cracks, grew seeds, just like they were brand new. So feel free to use them and abuse them. And then when you're done with your seed tray, <laughs> you can use it like a boot tray like we do at the front door. We are gonna be starting our seeds inside. So we're not super worried about getting this taken care of. What we'll do is literally just run to the big box. We thought about using timber but we don't have any way to mill it right now. And we don't wanna, one thing we've been advised against is growing more than you'll eat or growing things that you know you won't eat. Now, as a first time gardener, that's kind of hard to know the difference until you do. I know that I don't need eight different types of corn, but I'm probably gonna grow three or four varieties. So that way next year, I'll know which one I liked the best, which one performed the best in my zone, all that good stuff. Um, as far as bringing in the timber and the dirt and all that to grow in, 
we're literally just gonna take a trip to the big box, buy some tuba 10s, tuba 12s, eight foot long, rip them in half, five foot, four foot raised beds all day long, okay? It's gonna be awesome, stick around for that. But like I said, we've still got every bit of, I mean, we get snow in like late March, we will, we, every year. It's only here for like two or three days, like it just snows and it's beautiful. And then it's nasty and wet and muddy. We get snow in late March. So there's not a lot I can put in the ground until at least April 1st. So I'm not super worried about starting my seeds just yet. That's pretty much it. Uh, I have, I didn't fail to mention, they're just not in the video, but I have two beautiful little boys, Case and Adler. Case is 12 this Friday, the 29th. Adler just turned 20 months, the 5th of January. So my best buddies, they're the reason I'm doing this. Um, I'll tag a couple videos and put some down in the description of some of their highlight moments uh, this year that we've learned farming and gardening. It has been an amazing ride. We've met some awesome people and I'm just so grateful and thankful uh, for each and every one of you. It's, it's, um, this is just a blast. I'm having a ton of fun. Like I can't wait to get out here and walk around and just talk to you guys. And I know your names. I, look for you in the comments and just very, very blessed. I will say too that I'm not blind to the fact that at 5,000 subscribers, I often get almost 60 and 65% views on the videos I'm posting. That helps our channel tremendously. That's why I mentioned how many new subscribers we have in the last 28 days. I mean, that's not normal, it's not, but it's because of you guys hitting that like button and it's because of you asking questions about the duck pond. Boosts us in YouTube's algorithm. It's no secret. I'm not telling you anything nobody's ever told anybody that's a creator on YouTube. But it also means that you guys like our content. And I really, really appreciate it because I'm a first gen, I'm a first generation gardener. That's the first actual livestock guardian dog I've owned. Those are the first ducks I've ever owned. I've never banded a cow. I've never been 10 feet from a cow, let alone jumping on the back of one, banding him. I mean, I grew up in a house about 200 yards that way. And when we were chasing those cows around, those bulls, I have no doubt that there were people driving by that know me as a kid. And they were like, is that Chad Doss chasing a cow? You know, I'm, I know I surprise you with the beard and the tattoos. I know I look like a farmer, but I not, I a nerd. I grew up playing video games and sports. What a ride. I put out three, sometimes four videos a week. Being as busy as I am and not a full-time YouTuber, I'm kind of full-time slash part-time, leaning more towards full-time. We'll see how this year goes. And yeah, just very, very blessed, guys. Very blessed, very grateful. You'll meet the boys. Um, they're here quite often. It's nasty, murky, and muddy today. Certainly no reason for Adler to get out in this. Case is homeschooled. And he has some things he has to get done, you know, by 11, 12 o'clock in the day because he doesn't want to work, you know, late into the afternoon. So he doesn't come out for morning chores very often, but we always come out here a second time. We always come out here a second time later and have dinner with mom and dad. And we can go check on the farm and check on Smokey and things like that. So yeah, stick around. Uh, mom and dad are going to be a huge part of the garden. Haas Tools sent us an amazing amount of flowers. My mom loves flowers and so does my dad. They love landscaping. Um, we've got some daylilies that I've mentioned that are like 60 and 70 year old, like heirloom daylilies. I, I know the, you know, it's not like they've come back every year, but they produce this tuber and that tuber is what comes back or keeps them growing. I do a little DIY, little projects. I'm not a stranger to building some furniture and you know, very handy. I've remodeled a house. I own more DeWalt tools than anybody who's not a contractor should own, but I have no regrets about any DeWalt tool purchase. They don't sponsor me. I just love DeWalt. Isn't this gorgeous? I built that fence right there Whoop. for mom and dad's dog. If you guys want me to build anything, I don't know, furniture or something like that. The only tough part is lumber is still ridiculously high. I need a sawmill or something but not a lot of this is great timber either it's it's not it was just it's overgrowth it used to be a pasture so these are like hackberries and hawthorns and osage there's a few oaks a few 
I'm not building a raised bed. I don't need oak raised beds. I don't need cedar raised beds. You know, rough cut anything would be just fine for a raised bed. You know, I've built stuff out of box store pine that sat outside for years and still looks fantastic. Untreated, never painted. I mean, you know, there's cabins that are 100 years old that they literally just treated with mud and water and they're still standing across the nation. Guys, that's it. I've rambled on enough. If you want to know anything else down below, put it in the comments. Keep them clean. Keep them friendly. Um, I got to maintain a little bit of privacy in my life, but, you know, there is no Mrs. Adler Farms. Clearly, though, I did not give birth to my boys. I know. I know. There are people doing that these days. I got no, no, no judgment. That's okay, because I got my boys. We eat meat and potatoes like every night. Case does a lot of the laundry. He's a huge help around the house. Uh, the house definitely smells like man. Or when we turn on our Scentsy, it smells like pine. Because pine's the only way to go. I mean, I just, I run Christmas tree smells all year round at my house. But that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, upcoming, we've got to move the rabbits to the house. we got to move... Haas and Lola possibly to some new pasture. We need to set up something for like a farrowing setup for when the baby piggies get here, but that's four months away. The beefy boys will have a processing date in August. And yeah, the garden's probably gonna be the next big project, but stick around because we did get invited to a very, very cool place. And I can't tell you where we're going yet, but I'm super excited about it and honored and it's just going to be awesome. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. That's coming up in about a month, month and a half. So not too far, not so far distant future. Not so far distant future. Yeah, that's right. That's it. Um, oh, we have a tractor and four wheelers and a John Deere. John Deere, like LT 180, a little mower. But y'all be good. Don't work too hard. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Don't make it weird. God bless. Deuces. See y'all.